Hello everybody. We're picking up where we left off. This is the notes from Monday the 16th. And I'm gonna we left off having just found a whole bunch of dead people in the buried town of Herculaneum. Here's my contact information. Some of these scenes are disturbing, but man, are they interesting. All right, here we go. I'm going to hit play again. I see dead people. Which is a line, fam famous line from a movie. Sixth, sixth sense. All right, here we go. I'm hitting play. Members of the same family, one who died, locked in embrace. These people died with their arms over each other. Some of the victims were found wearing valuables. Solid gold. gold. Shining gems. See the rings? Others, no doubt certain they would escape, gathered their treasure troves and carried them as they fled. We know what that person was thinking. Sorry for the jumpy pause. We... Th we know that person thought they were going to beat this thing. If you knew you were going to die, you wouldn't have taken the time to scoop up your valuables and put them in a bag and run away with them. Okay? If you knew you were going to die, this person thought they were going to get away. It didn't work out right, though, did it? Today, the cataclysm that brought instant death has become an unparalleled legacy for modern scientists. Analysis of the bones may answer some of history's riddles about Roman culture. This is so interesting. Get ready. Look at all of them. Physical anthropologist Dr. Sarah Beisel has spent her career analyzing... American scientists. But this opportunity is unique. Listen to why. The reason why the Herculaneum population is so important is that it may well be the only one we ever have from the Roman period in Italy because Roman burials were cremations and so aren't studyable and we've had artifacts before we've had uh, architectural remains we've had literature but this is the first time we've had real people and I find it to very moving all right I'm gonna stop it right there for a second she's very respectful okay she's she's extremely respectful of these people she's learning about and here's the thing that's so important. You need to write this down. You have to know this. Trust me, you're going to need to know this on a quiz or a test. Okay? Why are these people so important? The answer is because the Romans always cremated their dead. The Roman society, the Roman culture, was one of the most important and influential cultures in the world. And yet we don't have very many of their bodies to study because they always got rid of the evidence. Okay? But these people, the volcano buried, and so they, we have something to study. Okay? So I'm drawing a line here. And this is just continuing off with yesterday's stuff. So here's today's date. Why these bodies are so important. Romans always cremated, that means burned, always cremated their dead. That equals no, no bodies. These Herculaneum, Hercu, sorry, I just spelled it wrong, Herc. You. I'm gonna let that dry. These Herculaneum victims are unique because we can study them. So she's a world expert. She's an American the Italian government brought in to help because we can study them. Hoping I've let this go long enough. Herculaneum. 
There you go. Herculaneum victims are unique. I'm going to hit play again. If you need to see that again, the writing will be back later. Hitting play. And it's not finders keepers. She doesn't get to keep any of it. Solid gold bracelet. A magnificent bracelet is found alongside a woman's remains. No doubt a person of wealth. She was found with much gold jewelry. I think she must have had them in her purse. Since her arm is off in another direction. Look, jewels for the eyes. Being very respectful. Each person gets their own yellow plastic box. Earrings meant for pierced ears were probably decorated with pearls. And as she ran... That's her flashlight. Bronze oil lamp. Beautiful protection against the dark. The eruption happened in the daytime, but it was so dark because of the eruption. Out of the ground because they talk to me then. They don't talk to me as much in the ground as they do to other people. But when I get them out, then they tell me what they did all their lives and what they did every day. And they say whether they're male or female, their ages, what kind of work they did, whether they were abused uh, when they were alive, what sort of nutrition they had. If they were sick, and well, I can't see all the illnesses, but some of them, they can tell me that. The women can tell me how many babies they had. They can't tell me whether they were happy or not. Each person gets their own box. Okay, get ready. I'm pausing it here, okay? Now, she's speaking Italian to this guy, the Italian guy who's helping her, okay? Italian and Spanish are similar enough in language that if you know some Spanish, you may be able to tell what she says next. I'm going to hit play. From a pelvic bone, Beisel is able to tell the woman's approximate age and how many babies she had. Uh, 20, uh, 27 anni, due, tre bambini. She was roughly 27 years old and had two or three babies. From that little bone. All right, now we have to talk for a second. She's looking at a chunk of the pelvis, okay? The pelvis is the great big bone that goes across the lower part of your body that holds your legs to your torso, okay? So when this, ba when this lady was giving birth, as the babies would go out, they actually leave a groove in the pelvis, okay? Like st streaks or scratches. I mean, I always knew that delivery hurt women but when i learned when i watched this video i was like oh good that grief that sounds awful all right so she's 26 or 27 years old she said ani which is italian for years and two or three bambini two or three babies all that news from one bone in all bison will analyze some twenty five thousand. look at this this is a monumental task each box is a person. The this is what you would be like. This is one person. That's a puzzle. Beisel begins the process of sorting and reconstruction. Could you do this? A lot of people say, oh, no, I couldn't do it. But some of you could. Okay. Let me tell you this. There is no stink. I mean, if you want to be grossed out by the thought of this being a person, that's okay. But there's nothing slimy or, or squishy or smelly. It's just bones. Okay? And some of them are broken. So this is a complicated puzzle. She knows the human body inside and out. So she's going to repair these bones and, and be able to tell you all about all kinds of stuff about this person. If you like puzzles and you have a strong stomach, this could be an inter interesting career for you to consider. Okay, Watch. She, now she's going to put this broken skull back together with epoxy, which is special glue. I use it all the time. It can take anything from two hours to two days. That's epoxy. It's, it stinks like bad tuna when you uh, use it. Pretty easy. It's really good glue. Some of the best glue there is. In general, I think they are pretty healthy. I haven't seen uh, some of the gross diseases that I might see. Some of the people who 
I presume were slaves show signs of working very, very hard. And they're, of course, not nearly so healthy as some of the other people. There's the top of the head. Ancient people have beautiful teeth. Even at ages of 35, 40, 45, they have very few cavities and very few abscesses, and all the teeth just lined up like piano keys. Each box is a different person. Look how many people she's got. This is an awesome part. Okay, here comes a baby skeleton. This baby was in the first chamber that we excavated in the back part. And actually, before we, we started taking people out, all you could see was the top of the little head, with, and it was being held in the arms of a young girl. So we didn't know. We knew it was a baby, but we didn't know too much about it. The, the men that were working with me all said, this is a baby and its mother and everything. And I looked at the skeleton of, of the girl holding it. It was a prepubertal girl. All right. You've never heard that word in your life, but I'll bet you can figure it out. Prepubertal. The girl holding the baby was prepubertal. What does pre mean? Before. Puberty. Can you be a mom if you haven't been through puberty? Uh, no. Okay. She knew going right there when they had the bodies, the skeletons, like, this is not the baby's mom. Okay? You can tell looking at a skeleton if this girl's been through puberty. She hasn't been. Okay? Uh, if you can handle it, and I'm going to tell you anyway. Okay? The reason women have hips is because puberty made their pelvis go outward so that they have a hole in the center of the pelvis that's big enough to get a baby out. Guys have a hole in their pelvis too, but it's like you can get a golf ball out of it. You're not getting a baby out of my pelvis. I'm sorry, it's not going to happen. Of a woman's pelvis, a baby just fits. Okay? Now, back to this. So, the mystery is a girl holding a baby. And she's able to tell you her a very good guess. It wasn't the mother, so then they all said it must be the sister. But I'll show you. I don't really think it was. This baby was a baby of a rich family because it had jewelry on it. I don't really think that a child that was from a poor family would have jewelry. Now, here's the girl that was holding her. Okay, get ready. I'll show you what. I don't think she was the sister. She's going to say something to herself, forgetting that she's on camera. It sounds like a sick joke, but it's not. Listen. Sort of a nice-looking person, isn't she? She's not making a sick joke. I've had I've shown this video every year since I've been teaching here. Okay? I've had kids snicker when they heard her say, sort of a nice looking person, isn't she? Remember, she's an expert. She's not seeing a, a skull. What is she seeing? She's seeing that all of the all the features of this person are the right size and shape and position, that this was a pretty girl. Okay? She can tell what you're looking like, what you look like from your bones. Now, this is a fake skull I keep in my room. Okay. I have no idea what that person would look like if it was if they reconstructed it, but she's mentally reconstructing it. Okay? Now, so she said to herself, sort of a nice looking person, isn't she? All right. And then she'll exp she remembers, oh yeah, I'm on camera. I better explain myself because that sounds kind of creepy. Nice regular features. But if you look really closely here at these teeth, you can see the line. See that groove? The deep line, and the same here on the first mold. Look at the groove. Now, this deep indentation in, into the uh, enamel shows that when the tooth was growing, when this particular part of the tooth was forming, she just simply wasn't getting anything to eat. So I don't, that in itself does not point to a girl of a rich family. This is even more telling. The humerus. You see these places here, the attachment for the muscles here on the humerus, that's, that's the arm bone. The attachment for the muscle here shows severe pulling of that muscle, which would really only happen in someone who was lifting things that were far too heavy for her to lift. Doesn't that sound like a slave girl? 
taking care of a rich family's baby. So my, my thing keeps flickering. Okay. A person who's had muscle pull so badly, it's left marks on the bone when their muscle pulled loose or almost loose. Imagine how much that would hurt. Okay. Now, those grooves in her teeth. When she was a young kid, like grade school age, she was starving to death when her body was trying to make her adult teeth. Okay, before they came out yet, before she lost her baby teeth. That sounds like a, a girl who's had a lot of starvation when she was younger. Now, this is your growth plate, by the way. See this line here? If you know anybody who's been in a sport or an accident and they broke an arm or a leg bone and the doctors are all worried about it. If, it, if you break it in the middle of the bone, that's not a big deal. But if you break it near the end, you can hurt the growth plate and then the bone can stop growing. And so, meanwhile, your healthy leg keeps growing and your, the leg where you've broken a growth cap, your, that leg might end up shorter. So that's why they, they take very special care if you break a bone when you're still growing. Okay? All right, I'm going to hit play again. Oops, play again. And work. no daughter of a rich family would have to work like that. So I think she was a slave. Like a, like a nanny. So you say that there really was a cross-section of people found on that beach. It wasn't just poor people. There were rich people. You remember the lady with the gold bracelets. So everybody was down there that didn't escape. And they were all there together. And they all died together. Now, I'm going to do something creepy to you. Can you see her skull? I can. And I don't ever tell you this. Now, now you're going to know. When I've looked at you, I've looked at your skull too. Because you can see, like, her eye socket, okay? And, you're, and the shape of her nose and her jaw, okay? If you look at somebody, don't tell them you're doing it. <laughs> when you look at somebody, you can sometimes see their skull. Especially if they're, if they're tired and their muscles on their face are a little bit limp. Okay? You can really see their eye sockets, okay? Now, I told you I was going to be creepy. I'm going to show you my skull. This is me. Okay. I was gone last Friday. If you all remember, I told you I was going to be unavailable. If you needed help last Friday, I was going to be at a doctor's appointment. I'm looking at getting my teeth replaced. Cause I have bad teeth. There's me. Okay. All that bright white is dental work. I've had a lot of dental work done and a lot of money and a lot of, you know, it's not fun getting dental work done and it's starting to go bad. It's like, Oh, I get to do it all over again. Fun and expensive. So this is a scan of my skull. Okay. You can see my eye sockets. Look at the bridge of my nose. You can just look at the, the, you can just barely see it. Look at the, the gray of my good sized nose. That's cartilage out here. There's lips, chin. Okay. I, I hope this doesn't gross you out. I think it's cool being able to see inside of myself. Okay. Now this lady would be able to see what, what I would look like just from my, from my skull. She could mentally picture what I would look like. How extra handsome I am, you know. All right, anyway, let's write some of this stuff down. We're at 19 minutes already. Okay, the mystery of the girl holding the baby. The girl holding the baby. Excuse me. Why did we? Why does the expert think it's probably a slave girl? Expert believes she was a slave, like a nanny. The baby had jewelry. Doesn't that sound like a rich family? Regular little kids wouldn't have jewelry on. Baby had jewelry. Girl didn't.
girl had signs of starvation. The grooves in her teeth enamel. And girl had severe muscle pulls. Somebody's been making her pick up stuff way too heavy. Has severe muscle pulls. That's just interesting. I, I, I love that kind of stuff. Okay. It's CSI kinds of stuff. Okay. Remember in the video, I didn't make you write it down. She said, when I take them out of the ground, they talk to me. Okay. She's not a weird freak. She's just really smart. These bones can tell you a story. Okay. When I, I'm going to show you pictures of me maybe another time, but my skeleton tells you a story about me, not just my dental work. Okay. My broken arm and my broken collarbone. Okay. I've broken my nose three times. That's interesting. Okay. Um, your bones t tell an expert your genetic background. Okay. Where, what part of the world your ancestors came from. Okay. They can tell about your nutrition. Sometimes your bones will tell about diseases you've had. Okay. We're almost done with this video. Okay, I'm uh, at 21 minutes already. I'm going to see what else is left. Because pretty soon this turns into other stuff that isn't the volcano as much. I'm going to hit play and we'll finish this up. But the central mystery remains. Why have they fled to the beach? By studying the various levels of volcanic debris. This guy's another American. The University of Rhode Island. Together. An American expert on volcanoes. The eruption of Vesuvius occurred in two phases. The first phase lasted for about 18 hours and uh, resulted in ash fall over a wide area. During that phase, the wind was blowing from the north, however, so that Herculaneum was spared most of the ash. And here, only about two inches of ash fell during the first 18 hours of activity. Therefore, the population of Herculaneum was relatively unaware of the potential dangers for the city. That's why they didn't leave. Two inches of ash. Herculaneum stayed, but their good fortune did not last. All right, get ready. Sigurdsson finds evidence of a violent change of events that did not occur until many hours after the ash. See the line where it turns from beige to black? Uh, these layers contain important lines of evidence. The beige. The carbonized wood or charcoal indicating temperatures of 2 to 300 degrees centigrade as well as bricks and other building materials, which indicate high force, perhaps of the order of one to 200 kilometers per hour. Hang on a second. That beige was an ash drift. Okay, so they first, we have a weather, we have wet witnesses that survived this and told us when the volcano blasted, when it, what time of the day it happened and what the weather was like. Because people actually rushed toward the volcano eruption in sailboats. Remember, they don't have motor boats back then. And we know which direction the wind was from. They told us, okay? But then the weather changed and the eruption changed, and now they've gotten more than a foot of ash, and now the weather changes again, okay? He's pulling out smashed bricks out of this ash drift. Dude, they're flying broken bricks flying through the air. That's not a good day to be there, okay? That's... Get ready, you're going to have loud noises. These layers, therefore, in our interpretation, represent surges. Now, surges are the most deadly phases of volcanic eruptions. Here it comes. Boom! One phase of the Mount St. Helens eruption in night. Watch it again. Watch very carefully, very quickly. You'll see a lightning flash. Volcanoes can make lightning. It's on the far left. It's very quick. One phase of the Mount St. Helens eruption in 1980 was a I don't know if you could see it or not. Unlike slowly advancing lava flows, surges explode with the force and fury of a nuclear bomb blast. Here comes a surge down Mount St. Helens. The eruption of Vesuvius in 79 AD was 10 times more powerful. For 12 hours, Vesuvius hurled into the sky a column of pumice and ash at times as high as 20 miles. Wow. When the column collapsed, it created a surge, a superheated avalanche that blasted through Herculaneum, killing its residents. Immediately after the surge, a slower moving river of debris called a pyroclastic flow entombed and preserved them. Of the five surges that followed, three reached Pompeii. 
but by now most people there had already fled. Herculaneans were not as fortunate. All right, I'm going to stop that video there and finish up with this. And I'm going to be really, 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 really gross. Okay, I'm going to talk about vomiting. Everybody here has been violently ill and you're throwing up and you're throwing up. And it isn't just once and you're done. You think, oh, I hope I'm done. And then, nope, here comes some more. Okay? This volcano is like the earth puking. And it just kept going. So what happened was the first blast was so violent, the, the volcano was puking powdered rock up to 20 miles straight up. That's incredibly violent. But then the pressure dropped a little bit. It's still puking, but it's not going as far. Then it just got out of the volcano and flowed down. This is how one city, Pompeii, could get buried in ash, and Herculaneum could be buried in lava. Different stuff was coming out in different directions at different times. The volcano buried Herculaneum under five different layers, five different pukes, all in the... In the a day or two okay the people were their bodies were underneath that okay Pompeii the bodies were dissolved away in the ash by the by the acid that dissolved away their bodies including their teeth but in Herculaneum it was not in ash it was underneath stuff called pyroclastic flow which is like fluffy lava flow that sealed them in and their bodies show signs of high temperatures. They were cooked, and the, the flesh is gone, but the bones are still there, okay? All right, that's 27 minutes, and I've been gross enough today. <laughs>